In the recent years, there was a lot of hype around the mini retro handhelds like Mew Mini Plus or RG35XX. These are solid mini Game Boys, but maybe you are after something a bit more powerful. Let me introduce you Genkiri Mini Plus. All these devices share some similarities like 3.5 inch 4x3 LCD, tiny size, but this one on top of that packs better chip, so it can emulate even Sega Saturn Dreamcast PSP. Plus, it also gives you an option to attach joysticks in case you want to use them. But of course, all of this comes at a higher price. Does it make any sense or should we rather stick with cheaper mini alternatives? Let's take a look! Genkiri Mini Plus, in terms of size, is very similar to Mew Mini Plus or RG35XX. Here I'm comparing all three of them. It's practically the size of Mew Mini Plus but it is a bit wider with rounded corners and the screen with the buttons are shifted more to the bottom of the device. From the front there is a D-pad, action buttons, start select, two function buttons, on the right side there is a volume, left side LNR3, on the top there is a power button with two microSD slots, from the bottom there are two solid speakers, USB-C and headphone jack, and from the rear side there is LNR1 and 2 that are actually quite usable. Battery indicator is from the front side on the top of the screen, not sure why. When I grab it to my larger hands, I like it a lot. I actually prefer it over Mew Mini Plus. Rounded corners feel nice. D-pad and action buttons are further apart, there is a bigger gap in between them, which suits me better. Triggers and bumpers from the rear side can be easily pressed without much effort or without shifting my grip. Plastic they have used for shell and buttons, on the other hand, feels much cheaper and of much lower quality compared to these cheaper mini handhelds. When you switch it on, you can choose from two front ends, Emulation Station and a Lovely Child. I think I prefer Emulation Station, cause it seems more graphically enticing, but Lovely Child is also not bad. It also comes with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and you can see all the specs right now on the screen. The big interesting feature is this detachable dock with two clickable joysticks. It is sold separately, you just slide it in and job done. You gain two joysticks. But this interesting contraption in my opinion makes the whole device less ergonomic, more bulky and overall proportions are off. We'll get to it later, for now I'm detaching it and we are moving on to emulation. Also huge thanks to GoGengeek for sending this product for Anna's review, it's greatly appreciated. So emulation, let's start with something cool like Sega Saturn via Yabasan Shiro. All games I've tried are running great, at original resolution with no frame skip. I'm really happy to see it in here, in spite of fact I'm not into many Saturn games, Panzer Dragon 2 enjoyable, as well as House of the Dead, Die Hard Arcade and Virtua Fighter 2. All of these ROMs were included at the SD card, but you can easily add your own ROMs, just connect the device to the PC and transfer it over. Dreamcast games are running surprisingly good, I've checked already devices with same chip and this is running as good as them, even a little bit better I think. For Dreamcast I had to plug in the joysticks cause many games require it and you wouldn't be able to play without them, like Soldier of Fortune and I gotta tell you. I do not like this dock, it makes this device more bulky, the joysticks are too low and the triggers are too high, I have to hold it kinda asymmetrically, I have to move my right hand up, if you would use only joysticks and action buttons it's fine but with triggers it's a bit more trickier, and to me it feels honestly a little bit like a gimmick. Zombie Revenge, Res, running good. Red Dock, superior firepower, bit slower, all at default settings, Sonic Adventure 2, full speed. Another surprising emulator to see in here is J2ME for the old Java games from Nokia's back in the day. I'm a huge fan of Java games, even though they are kinda weak, and for me it's mostly about nostalgia. Still, I always love to go back to play some Assassin's Creed, God of War or Asphalt series. You can change the screen orientation or stretch it with L2. Also guys, if you are enjoying these videos, like and subscribe cause there is certainly more to come.
In the port section, I found the port of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Shredder's Revenge. I remember it getting ported and being playable on these retro handhelds via Portmaster, but I've never actually played it. This is my very first time, and I gotta say, this game feels right at home on this device. You don't need joysticks, and it's running full speed. Great game, great port, great experience. I wish this game was ported also to the PS Vita. Way back, I've heard some rumors, somebody's working on it, but now it seems it was just a rumors. PSP emulation acceptable, loads of titles are playable, Death Jr, Undead Knights, but loads are running slower, like God of War, and other very demanding games like Near Orbit Vanguard Alliance. Nintendo DS, PS1, and all the systems don't have any issues with this chip. N64 mostly ok, but don't expect to play GoldenEye at full speed. Now to my final thoughts. What I like, what I don't like. I like the device shape and how it feels in my hands. It suits me better than Mi Mini Plus or RG35XX. I think it's partially because of the overall proportions and because of it's wider. The stereo speakers are very good, as well as the screen quality. Dual boot option is also a welcome addition. Now, what I don't like. I don't like the dock with joysticks at all. It messes up the whole ergonomics and grip. And it just feels weird to hold on to it. And it's not even included in a box. You gotta pay extra 20 bucks for it. The device costs around $120 alone, including shipping and taxes. Which is another thing I don't like. It's quite expensive. You can get devices with same chip and joysticks for around $100. But they are larger, so it all depends on your personal preferences, what exactly you are looking for. If you are looking for tiny size, RG35XX and Mio Mini Plus are solid options. They have the price of GKD Mini Plus. They are weaker, you cannot play Dreamcast or Saturn. You know, you lose some, you gain some. Personally, I think I wouldn't buy it. I would rather invest into something more powerful and horizontal, because I've never been into these vertical handhelds. I hope this video helped you to gain more information about this device. Like, subscribe, join. Thanks for watching. Thanks to members and Patreons for support. Do skakalenia, priatelia.